De Sitter space is a mathematical model of the universe used in modern cosmology. The names De Sitter space, DS, and anti-De Sitter space, honor Willem De Sitter, a Leiden University astronomy professor, and the head of the Leiden Observatory. In the 1920s, Willem de Sitter and Albert Einstein collaborated closely in Leiden to study the structure of space-time. Tullio Levi Civita independently and around the same time, found the properties of the newly discovered de Sitter space. De Sitter space is a solution to the equations of Einstein's theory of general relativity that describes a universe with a positive cosmological constant which is a term in the equations that represents the energy density of the vacuum of space. In this space, the expansion of the universe is accelerating, as if there is a repulsive force pushing everything apart. Aspects of De Sitter Space De Sitter space and fate of the universe is closely related to the concept of entropy, Boltzmann brain and arrow of time. It is demonstrated that a De Sitter space has a horizon and no spatial infinity. Essentially, space-time is not stationary. Incorporating a positive cosmological constant into Einstein's equation has a significant impact on the global space-time properties. Infinite nothing will be space-like resulting in a cosmological event horizon, and there will be no spatial infinity if it forms a compact hypersurface. Observers are incorporated into the description of physical processes in a de Sitter space. The radial coordinate has only a finite range of values for observers ca moving with the expansion. For observers who experience no spatial curvature, space is geodesically singular or incomplete in the infinite past, and his future light cone is bounded by a horizon that moves with the observer. A de Sitter space thus has an instability. Its partition function has an imaginary part due to an unstable fluctuation around the S2-S2 instanton. If this is continued to Minkowskian metric, it is seen that this is a thermal process, in which the entire de Sitter space decays into a Schwarzschild de Sitter space. The semi-classical analysis requires the black hole horizon to fall on top of the cosmological event horizon, because only in that case the two horizon temperatures are equal. It is believed that quantum fluctuations will bring the black hole horizon inside the cosmological event horizon. Then the black hole is at a higher temperature than the surrounding space. The black hole on average emits more particles than it absorbs, and starts to evaporate. In this way the black hole mass reduces, leading to a reduction of the horizon radius, which in turn leads to an increase of the black hole horizon temperature. We need to note that a black hole has negative specific heat. In the end the black hole will have evaporated completely and a pure de Sitter space is left behind. But even though de Sitter has an instability, it does survive. It evaporates much faster than the time required for another nucleation to take place. The far future of the universe seems to resemble something close to a de Sitter space, which is a special kind of space that expands forever, without matter and radiation in it. The time one can have to wait to see if our universe will become de Sitter space is so enormous that is beyond eternity itself, such time scales that are vast, monstrously vast, the order of 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 76 years, it is so far away into the future that we humans really cannot comprehend. Most physicists believe that the second principle of thermodynamics, which stipulates that entropy in an isolated system, such as the entire universe as a whole, can never decrease, and this has an impact on the irreversibility of the arrow of time. This has to do with the entropy term from thermodynamics, which is only tangentially relevant to how disorder is understood in everyday life. Entropy will always increase in closed systems, according to thermodynamics. The reason for this is that minor differences, are considerably more likely to occur in big numbers, than huge differences. The quick response to the question is that we have no idea, because the apparent existence of an arrow of time is one of contemporary physics' greatest unresolved puzzles. The future is unknown to us, but we can recall our pasts. Effects always follow causes, not the other way around.
In a de Sitter universe the entropy would have done it with everything that resembles as normal matter by our standards, by that time everything in the universe will be characterized by very low energy levels, radiation only, and very long time scales. Occasionally, electrons and positrons drifting through space will collide to form positronium atoms. These inherently unstable structures must inevitably disintegrate into their component parts. Very slowly, additional instances of low-level annihilation will occur. The de Sitter universe is a desolate, barren, cold infinite void, and is as characterized by its high degree of symmetry and is homogeneous and isotropic, meaning that it looks the same in all directions and at all locations in space. It is also a maximally symmetric space, which means that its geometry is completely determined by its curvature. It is commonly assumed that our universe is approximately described by a de Sitter space. De Sitter space plays an important role in modern cosmology because it is believed to represent the late time evolution of our universe, when the expansion is accelerating due to dark energy. It is also used as a background space in many theoretical models of physics beyond the standard model, such as string theory and inflationary cosmology. The latest observations suggest that our universe is currently undergoing accelerated expansion, which is a key feature of de Sitter space. This acceleration is thought to be driven by dark energy, which behaves like a cosmological constant in Einstein's theory of general relativity. However, the actual geometry of our universe is more complex than a simple de Sitter space, and it has a non-uniform distribution of matter and energy, which creates fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background radiation and the large-scale structure of the universe. These fluctuations provide valuable information about the properties of the universe, such as its age, composition, and geometry. One of the properties of a de Sitter space is that it is infinite. We don't know if our universe is a de Sitter space because the observable universe's size and scale are determined by cosmological horizons. Despite the possibility that the universe is infinitely large, according to the widely accepted Big Bang theory, we can only observe a small portion of it. The observable cosmos is what we can observe. There are several commonly accepted definitions of cosmic horizons, which are distance restrictions imposed by cosmology. Our universe's cosmological constant is positive, but because we also have mass energy, the attracting gravity caused by the latter is resisted by the repulsive gravity caused by the former. Our universe's expansion will either be accelerating or decelerating, depending on which of these two forces is greater. The density of mass energy or the quantity of mass energy per unit 3D volume, determines its impact. However, even if the cosmos is expanding, the overall amount of matter and energy does not change. The mass energy density thus drops with time. The cosmological constant, however, seems to remain constant over time. Its impact does not lessen as the universe gets bigger. In de Sitter space, the universe expands exponentially, meaning that the distance between any two points in the universe increases at an accelerating rate. This is in contrast to the decelerating expansion we observe in our universe. The universal expansion was constantly slowing down in the early cosmos because the mass energy density effect was greater than the cosmological constant effect. The mass energy effect however, became so weak around 6 billion years after the Big Bang, that the cosmological constant effect took over as the main force. The cosmological constant effect increased relative to the mass energy effect, which decreased as the cosmos grew older. As a result, the universal expansion has been accelerating and speeding up since since the two effects switched places in terms of dominance. Data from various sources all support this theory. These sources include the cosmic microwave background radiation, the finding of early universe baryon acoustic oscillations, and projected abundances of primordial elements, the so-called Big Bang nucleosynthesis, as well as supernovae brightness with distance, the redshift variation. It is possible to model the cosmological constant as a peculiar sort of mass energy with positive mass but negative pressure. In other words, we replace the cosmological constant term in the Einstein field equation with a mass energy term with these peculiar characteristics. This mass energy term is sometimes referred to as a dark energy because it appears to be caused by a certain form of unknown mass energy. This term, which was picked at random, 
refers to mass energy that is visible to us but that we cannot detect. Many physicists think it might emerge from the vacuum in some as yet unknown way. It is therefore also frequently referred to as a vacuum energy. In contrast to matter density, dark energy density does not appear to alter over time as far as the available data can tell. This would be a property of the vacuum that one would anticipate, one that shouldn't alter as the universe expands, and the density of the material within it decreases. This is another another factor that leads many people to believe that dark energy is a vacuum phenomenon. The space-time known as De Sitter, which bears the name of its discoverer, is described as having no matter, either ordinary or dark, but a positive cosmological constant, or dark energy. It is an empty 4D universe with positive curvature because of the cosmological constant. The space expands at an exponential rate due to this positive curvature. It is devoid of all kind of matter but exhibits a distinctive and peculiar behavior in space and time. The curvature it creates is the same everywhere, because the cosmological constant factor in the Einstein field equation is constant everywhere in space and time. It behaves like the 4D hypersurface of a 5D hypersphere. De Sitter space is maximally symmetric and the curvature is uniform throughout. One should not refer to our universe as a De Sitter universe since De Sitter space lacks mass energy, while our universe contains both. Our vacuum, which has no mass, can be described as a De Sitter vacuum. Though it isn't technically accurate, the term De Sitter space is frequently misused to refer to our universe. Keep in mind that as the cosmos ages, its matter will eventually become so diluted that its influence on curvature will almost disappear. At that point, the cosmological constant effect will dominate the universe's appearance. In essence, we are heading toward a universe that will resemble a De Sitter universe in every way. As time goes to infinity, our universe asymptotically approached to be a De Sitter space, but keep in mind the word infinity. Because even the Iron Star era is basically negligible in time, compared with the concept of future infinite time. Although in cosmology we typically refer to the 4D space-time of our universe when we talk of De Sitter space, mathematically we are not constrained to four dimensions. In other words, we can think of De Sitter space as existing in 3D, 5D, 6D, or any other number of dimensions. In these situations, we often define the space in terms of its symmetry rather than a cosmological constant. De Sitter space of every arbitrary dimension has constant, positive curvature everywhere in that space. It is similar to the hypersurface of a hypersphere, where, in an abstract sense, we can imagine the hypersurface as always being a radius-like distance from a center point, similar to how the surface of the 3D sphere in our experience is everywhere equal distance from the sphere's center. To give you a strict answer, in mathematical physics, n-dimensional de Sitter space, often abbreviated to DSN, is a maximally symmetric Lorentz manifold with constant positive scalar curvature. It is the Lorentz analog of an n-sphere with its canonical Riemannian metric. De Sitter space is in short an open-like universe that expands forever, it is what our universe is believed to be in the far future, a De Sitter space-like universe. Thank you for watching.